You're not a shliach here. I, I try to have to explain. But when I got married, when I was a young man, I, I went, well, we did think we're going to go to Bolivia. We were thinking of going to Melbourne. It didn't work out. So where you clock, we stayed here in the Flatbush. <laughs> David, the hell? <laughs> that shows you ever stuck. But there's a certain willingness to go to go out to conquer another land. My son-in-law was telling me that they say that the, the, the Shliach, Rabbi Lazarov, so he was driving to Houston, cross country, very far, didn't have GPS. He came to places, and how, how, how could he read it? You think he reads English? So uh, he came every gas station. Is Houston? No. Another couple of miles. Okay. Finally, he gets to, is it Houston? They said, this is Houston. Ah, this is my city. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so, the answer, the answer. Then this is like I said many times. People by Chaldon in by Chaldon are aware of this. In Chabad, there is a, the whole globe is already split up. Every piece of land belongs to someone already. There's, there's nothing extra here. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to share a sicha from the Rebbe. Moedet kegishmak a sicha that the Rebbe once said in honor of his father. Oh, and tonight is also a yard site uh, for uh, the Mermelstein brothers, their mother. Shashkoch al yoyna, achofov, shetzabid l'zeich and l'shmosa. Amen. Amen. Through that, they will have a child very, very soon. Amen. 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 But first, another story. Just a, a story that I shared with uh, my son-in-law and daughter last night. We made a small Malava Malka. They, uh, they're going where, where the whole idea is to conquer the world. But there's a marshal from Nebdavid, this Talmud of Baal Shem Tev. He said that once the king had, uh, the, there was a king that he had a long-standing war out in some far front and uh, he sent he sent out a son and a general to help out in the war efforts. There were two different groups. Son went with the army and the general. On the way, they both respectively got the news that in one front there was an unbelievable defeat. And the son, the son is heart is is shaking. It's shaking. It's his father's kingdom is now on the line. What a defeat could mean, that one feet defeat could bring the next. The general, he hears that, he says, oh, oh, now is an opportunity for promotion. I know that, I know the general out there. He's a yuku, and he doesn't know how to handle a war, but I'm going to get there. If things are going to turn around, and when uh, we're going to get back, this is uh, my ticket to promotion. Then they travel a little further, and they hear good news that there was now, there was, uh, they had a victory. In the next battle, they had a victory. 
So the son is full of joy. Ah, the tide turned. And the general is upset. Okay, so whatever. He's not one of the still, still one of the ten generals. Uh, he thought that, uh, you know, he's going to, this is going to be his ticket to promotion. So said, said the Talmud of Hashem, there could be two attitudes. One attitude is, the conquer the whole world. What's the difference? How it's done? Who would do it? There's many groups among uh, the Eden. There's all kinds of groups and Kral Yisrael and Shem Reiter and Mitzvahs. Different Nusach and a different way of thinking and a different way of doing. Well, what's the difference? We're all doing in the in the, the army of the Eidishtim. We're all part of Tzivah Yisashem to conquer the world. So the attitude of the son is if he sees that the success going on there's another shul, another shir, another yeshiva. Doesn't mean that it's my yeshiva. Who cares my yeshiva? It's it's good. I'm happy. Baruch Hashem. It's the the the, the another con- conquer, another conquest. But the general, he think of himself. You know, his promotion. So the nimshal uh, is uh, <laughs> that. Uh, 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 the city, uh, uh, however many years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, when Rabbi Lazarus came there, so the, could, there's room for the attitude of going like a general. Okay. okay. So I want to go into this uh, mamish, um, beautiful Hezbir from the Rebbe that has to do with conquering uh, the world, and in general to do with this, with the union of a yard set of a tzaddik. Chazal say that whenever they go out in war, they would take the, the, the luchas with them. And actually said on this week's Parsha and Ekev, that uh, which luchas did they take? They took the shivrim, and that now wasn't the Oren that was built by Betzal. The Oren that was built by Betzal that was used for the second. But, uh, and Rashi says that once it happened in history that they took the, the second Luchas in the Oren that was made by Betzal, and then it was a catastrophe. That was in the days of Eli, and they lost the war, and was the Plishtim, and then Eli died, and the sons of Eli were killed. It was a, an unbelievable catastrophe because they took out, was the sin was that they took the Luchas. They did the right thing. The whole luchas, if you think about this, the Gemara says that the luchas, the luchas is a schus, right? They're taking it as a schus to win the war. Now, why are these luchas broken? Why are the luchas broken? You want to conquer. The Gemara says, Mia Isha of a person that's hard, his heart is shaking and he's scared to go out in war. He should yelach the Yosher of the go back home. Go back home. If you, if we only can have soldiers that are brave heart. If they have no brave heart, they should go back home. The Gemara says, what does it mean he doesn't have a brave heart? And the Gemara says, number one, he's partially scared. He's scared to see blood. He's scared to slaughter of the enemy. And the Gemara says, he basically says, no, 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 not only that. He's Yodim Avedis, should be Yodim as Avedis. Which kind of Avedis? What kind of Avedis are we talking about? That he, he, he makes a brach in the Tulm Shel Yad. And then he spoke to someone. He had a conversation. And then he put on the Tulm Shadosh. You're not supposed to make an between Tulm Shel Yad and Tulm Shadosh. Whoa. It's not like he went to McDonald's and ate a cheeseburger. Talking about that. It's a fanat abyssal between the Tulm Shel Yad and the Tulm Shadosh. So even that person is concerned. And Chazal say, Kula Chiyofe Rayosi, Umum Einbach. We're talking about the soldiers in the Jewish army that they were all tzaddikim and tzaddikim gemurim. Now, imagine, they're traveling with the Oren that has the shivrei luchas. What's the shivrei luchas? Why is the luchas broken? It reminds you of the cheta ego. Why would they be traveling with that? That must be, there has to be an unbelievable lesson of Oedah Sashem. But the question is, how Chazan know that this is the Avera that is saying that he was talking between Tfil and Shilyata. Oh, the soldier knows. Chazal doesn't know. No. The guy maybe, announces. But maybe he made Avera before, and he's afraid this Avera, when he go to war, Any Avera. Him. Even such a small one, if Yosek really says, if he, if he, if he did him, if he spoke Russian harder or he insulted another Jew in public, he shouldn't be, uh, he shouldn't be in the army. 
But even if he did such a slight Aveda that he spoke, it's slight, and we bring out how slight of an Aveda. And therefore we say that Kula Chiyofer Ayosi, Umum Einbach goes on the, on the Tzavah, on the, the, the tzava of the Jews, that they were Mamish Big Tzadikim. So, they would, why wouldn't they take their regular Luchas? That's the question. Why wouldn't they take the regular Luchas? They would do why was it the, uh, they would do Tshuva. They would do Tshuva. They would do tshuva? Yeah, from, from the broken the uh, I hear, I hear, I hear you, Pshat. We'll talk about some of the Pshatim of a few Mephorshim. And the Rebbe has his own Pshat. But before before we get into the, the, the just again, uh, something to, to uh, the, that same Rashi, Rashi says that Kosha, Misoshan Shal Tzadikim, Litna Kadosh Baruch Hu Kiyom Shen Eshtabru Ba'aluchas. That when a, a Yid, when a, a, a tzaddik, when a yid passes away, it's a difficult, to, it's kosher for the Ebishter like the day that the luchas were broken. Which, Lachoida, what is the pshat? What's the pshat? What's the compare when you compare? So, we compare two things. So, you say, it's just, just like the luchas is a travesty. So, when a yid passes away, it's a travesty. But, because I'll compare the two things, there has to be a dimyan. What does it mean, kosher? They have beautiful voice in there. What does it mean, kosher? Something is difficult for the Ebishter? What do you mean it's difficult? It's it's not that hard to pick up this bottle. If you have to build, pick up a pallet of uh, sand and uh, cement, I can't. It's kosher. I have to get it into a tractor trailer and pick it up. But uh, but uh, but the Bainshlam is a kol yochel. Say kosher, the Ebesha, something kosher. What do you mean kosher? Ebesha is a beautiful voice. When a medal of Imanov, he said, when you know, when a person person strains himself, he gets red in the face. Do you see his blood? Because the blood is the highest of the person. So um, the kosher means that when a person is doing something, that it's a hard job, that he has to put himself all the way into it. When we say by the Ebesh is something kosher, we mean something positive, actually. We see there's something unbelievable gili over here. There's an unbelievable gili lakus that is involved in the breaking of the luchas, and also we see it in the, in the istalkas of a tzaddik, in the yortzad of a tzaddik. So the question is, what is it? And why is it to attack it? That we travel at war with the luchas. So, Bakal, what's the con- connection of the luchas and a, a, a tzaddik? A beautiful word. Uh, a tzaddik, a yevri neshama. There's a neshama in the body. Same zone, the luchas. The luchas had, there was, uh, there was the luchas and there were the letters of the luchas. There was the luchas and there was a the letter. There were two separate things. The Chazal say that what happened, that the letters went out of the luchas. The letters went out of the luchas and the luchas got very heavy. And that's when Moshe Rabbeinu broke the luchas. The same thing with a, with a neshama. There's the body and the neshama, and the neshama goes out of the body, and the body gets very heavy, and uh, that's the end of these talks. The Rebbe explains it like this. First of all, again, we said that l'choyda, what's the, what's the uh, why are we traveling, why are we traveling with the broken luchas? So the Dharma fortune that say, to be honest, knife sheets, uh, they say that the Shivre Luchas is really a big Limud Schus. What's a Limud Schus? Just like Chazal say that it says, Mizmar la Asav. The Asav was singing about the Churban Beis HaMikdash. That why is it a song? Because it's a Shvach to the Ebishter, the Kila Chamosa, Ala Eitzim, Ala Bonim, that the Ebishter took his anger and he spilled it out on the rocks. He spilled it out on the rocks. The same thing over here. That uh, instead of uh, spilling the anger in the Eden, the anger was poured onto the luchas. And this is similar to what Ashi says in Pasha's Kisis. Ashi says that why did Moshe Rabbeinu uh, break the luchas? So he says, a marshal. There was once a king that he was engaged with a woman. And then there was a scandal in the palace. Uh, something totally uh, <laughs> mis. Uh, but the truth is that the uh, Kala, she wasn't at fault. But it was one of the other women, one of the shvachas that was involved with the uh, with the story. That uh, they were talking that there were things going on in the palace. But really, she did nothing wrong. She did nothing wrong. But one of the shvachas did something, and therefore everyone was talking about it. The melech came back to the palace, and he hears about this, and he's in unbelievable anger that he thinks that he was betrayed by this woman that he was engaged to, that he was a modesus. I'm just engaged. That's uh, So uh, the the king had a, like, a friend that uh, that knew that uh, after investigation she's going to come clean. But in the meantime, he's very angry. So what did he do? He took the ksuba. Afrumagoy. Yeah, he also gets married to the ksuba. That's 
meets a woman and, uh, that they had a ksuba, and he t- rips up the ksuba, and he says to, to the king, how are you going to kill her? How are you going to punish her? She's not your wife, Lachal. I ripped up the ksuba. In the meantime, it turns out that she did nothing wrong, and then the melech says, ah, you ripped up the ksuba, you go write up a new ksuba. That's what Eivish said, psalach ha-shnei luch ha-shnei you ripped up the first one. The reason that Moshe Levin ripped up the first one is he said, why are you going to kill the Jews? Because you just gave them the luchas, which is like the ksuba. And they agreed to anoichi velo yi And they went, they made an eagle, but I already broke it. So what, you're killing them for what? They, they violated a contract, the contract of marriage. But there is no contract. I broke the contract. That's what Rashi says. That's what Ashi says. And that's what the so, so a lot of the Mephoshim say, as I said, that this is a big limutzchus. The truth is, Takaz, it's a serious nefesh, and why should have been a seducer thing? But the Emma says a little bit of, first of all, Ashi never says it. Second of all, that this is that this is a limutzchus. Second of all, it's not a limutzchus. Moish, if the Abish want to punish the Eden, so the Abish, so Moshe Rabbeinu says, I ripped up the Ksuba. You made a contract? I broke the contract. That's not a limb with still. That's not a limb with You can't punish them because I broke the contract. They, they didn't violate the contract. I broke the contract. But that's a limb with How is that a limb with Besides, even if they bro- they didn't violate the contract, they didn't do a mitzvah of mice and toivah. It's not like, you know, you're not going to sponsor a kiddush in honor of the eagle. It's not like they did something really special. Even a guy is supposed to know that you're not supposed to violate the Elamai, the punishment comes because they just got the luchas and the, and they didn't follow and they made a egg. Okay, so he broke the he broke broke the contract. Okay, it's not a limutzchus. What's a limutzchus? But now the word that Rebbe wants to say about the uh, uh, the connection of the tzaddik and the luchas, the yid and the luchas. Beautiful word. First of all, we have to understand there is the Chazal say there were ten things that were created by Hashemosh. Every year you learn Sirke Yavis, and I just didn't notice it. So it's like, you know, you see it so fast. There is a Michtov Haluchos. There were two things that were created. One is Michtov, the letters that the Abish wrote in the Aseris of the Brit, and the other one, the Luchos. In other words, there are two separate creations. The Rebbe says, the Emerson is Mosek. It says, uh, and then it says, uh, continues, so there are two separate things. There were two separate creations. The Abish that created something called Luchas. al says, and this is something unbelievably spiritual. Uh, even if you didn't learn Tanya, if you learned the Perky of it, and you read, so it was something that was spectacular. It was like with the Shomir, that was created, something spectacular. But there were two separate things that he created. He created the luchas, and he also created the michtav and the luchas. They're two separate things. First, he created one thing, and then he created the other thing, and he put the two things together. There is the michtav and the luchas, the two separate things. So, when uh, when the oasis, the chazal say that the oasis went out, the oasis went out of the luchas. So therefore, he said, okay, so we're going to break it. Why would you break it? Wait a minute. If the Luchas itself, without the Oasis, have a Kedusha, the Ebishter created the Ben Hashemoshes, HaLuchas Lu, Maise Lekim The Ebishter made it. The Ebishter made it. Before he wrote any words into it, before he carved any words in it, there's two different creations. The Ebishter made. One thing is the Luchas, and the other thing is the Oasis that were in the Luchas. So the Oasis, the Ebishter took back the letters. Took him straight back. So Moshe should have been said. So the Pasha said, "Okay, David should, <laughs> so now it's a rock. It's a rock. That and the rock he combined the ninety-nine cent store. This is all Boom, he broke it. But if you think about this, it's not true. It was not Stam a rock. It was my Selakim. The rock itself, without the Oasis, was something miraculous. Was something created by the Abish did. It wasn't like the second Luchas of Abish just said, carve it out from a special rock under your tent." It was something that was miraculous, something special. So why why break it? Why break it? What's the union of breaking it? And Bakhlaw heard it's also to break it. Not stam tashmisha kedusha. We say oh abit abdun as call him a koimus, when it tats them as bizbachesam as vad to mishmam, loitas and shemla kemal kaichim's also. That's why now let it even a shul. So it's just a break, it's the slightest thing. That people that were very mean in the shul, which is not allowed to even the slightest thing, it's a shem's house. 
not allowed to break anything in a shul because it comes from this person. And that's why it's a big mitzvah to be machazik the bed kabayis in a shul, and it's a terrible thing to break something. So how come? So what's going on over here? Uh, Demis says, even though Rashi doesn't say, Rashi never says this thing that the that the letters went flying out of the luchas, but but but. But uh, Rashi does say, Rashi says two things interesting. Rashi says, in Pasha, because he said, Rashi says, that Moshe Rabbeinu said that the carbon Pesach is one of the mitzvahs. The Torah said that a Ben Necha can't have the carbon Pesach. These Yidin, they're, they're Ben Necha. How can I give them the Asaras Adibris? Then Rashi says in the, this week's Pasha that he, want, he, he ripped the Ksuba. But, but both are true. Okay, you don't give it to them. Who asked you to break it? But Rashi should say two reasons. One, why didn't he give it to them? Because they were Ben Neche. Why did he break it? Because he wanted to rip up the Ksuba. But actually doesn't mention this thing that the letters went flying out. But there could be Emes too. Because the Pashtas that actually compares it to the Nefetit of a Tzadik. What happens of a, of a Yid that passed away? The Neshama goes out. And then the body starts falling apart. Same thing here. The letters went out. And then Moshe Rebbeinu broke. Huh? It got too heavy. So what's the Pashtas got heavy? It's not as well. A oh, beautiful beer from the Rebbe. Just uh, the whole purple here, but everything uh, separately is a beautiful beer. Whenever you think about this, I, I, you know, I think that the oysters went flying out. But think about this. How do the oysters go flying out? Think for a minute. If you have a safer toilet, right? So you have ink and you have parchment. So if you want to say um, that the letters went away, so it's possible. It's actually a uh, Xav. Or, uh, ink that you can't uh, scratch off is possible for using for a Toyota. Okay, so it's possible to, that, the, that the ink should get off the, the parchment. But you say that these uh, rock or the letters were carved into the rock. How does it mean? What does it mean that the oasis went out of it? What does it mean the oasis went out? So you're going to say <coughs> the parts of the rock went also out? That all of a sudden, the, like, how did they exactly, what does it mean that the oasis went out? If you say a cloth, a secretary, you could say that the ink fell off, the ink disintegrated. But what does it mean the oysters fly out of a, a rock? It's carved into the rock. How, the How does it, it went out? Porchu. Yeah, porchu. How did they porchu? So the Rebbe says, a pashtus, a child can also understand this. It was through and through. Exactly, it was through and through. So how did they fly out? And it was a miracle. You could see both. So how does it fly? Out? How do the letters fly out? The rock is still here, and the letters fly out. What does that mean? So the Rebbe says a beautiful word. A child can understand it. Not the, a child. the Gemara says that when Gabi Shabbos that a chay knows that's asmik. Carrying someone alive, and the Shushad Abim, you're not chay because a live person is is carrying himself. That's a person's alive. A person could be a hundred uh, pounds. You could pick him up. But uh, a, a mace, it could be, it could be 100 pounds. It's very hard. You can't pick up uh, this a mace. Why? Because a chai knows it's atzmai. And a bechomish lemikra also understands it. They see, he can pick up his little brother. We call it dead weight. So what happened? The, what happened is that the oisius will purchase the, the, what happened? The chayda, the luchas were very heavy. Chazal say, orken shishan, rochman shishan. The very begashmis were very heavy. So you could say Moshe Rabbeinu was really macho guy, and he also killed Oix. He was a big guy. But uh, the Pashtus is not because he was a really big guy, because the Luchas were alive, just like a human being. There's Neshama and the Guf. That's why Chazal compare the Luchas to a Jew. Just like a person, there's a soul in the body. These rocks, they were rocks. That's why they made them in Ashmosh. They were live rocks. Live rocks, just like there's a concept in the ocean, live rocks, but they're not really live. But there's such a thing as live rock. These rocks and the luchas were kipshut, they live rocks. And just like the body of the yid, the body is, is, is really alive and animated from the neshama. The, what really made the rocks alive is the neshama, the michta. There is the luchas and the michta. When the yidin sin. So what went flying out? The neshama went flying out. That doesn't mean that the letters, there was no more anoichi. Therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu broke it because he wanted to rip up the contract. So really, it got, it both are true. What Chazal is saying, that it, uh, that it got heavy, and therefore he broke it. And the Chazal said that he broke it in order to break the, uh, break the contract, the marriage contract. These two Maimah Chazal are not a contradiction. They go, go very well together. 
What does it mean that the letters weren't flying out? The Aleph of Anoichi didn't fly out. The Nishama, the Rebbe brings it as Alshach that says, the Ruach HaKodesh Shehoyer Bekerev Kol Oizva is Parach. It means the, the Nishama went flying out. But the rock, and therefore, that's why the rock got very heavy. But even if the rock is very heavy, you don't have to break it. You could easily put it down to the ground. He decided, Moshe should have been decided to break it because he wanted to rip up the marriage contract. He, he put up the Mishka. Good. So he had tremendous Koyach. Okay. But you don't have to say if the Luchas are alive, so you don't need that tremendous Koyach. He was, he was, the Luchas were alive. That's what it sounds like from Chazal. But the other Chazal say that he wanted to rip up the... It was deliberate. That it was deliberate. And so the Rebbe says, the Pshat is like this. He saw that the Ebishter took out... He saw that the Ebishter is starting to break it. He saw that the Ebishter... Because the Ebishter took out... The Ebishter took out the Chayis, and all of a sudden they feel heavy. So if the Ebishter started to break it, I could break the rest of it. So the Pashas, you ask, who gave him the right to break it? It's also to break something, Abed Abdun, it's also to break something that has a Kedusha. But he saw that the Abishta started to break it. He saw that the Abishta took out the Chai. So Mela, he did the rest of the breaking because he wanted to help the Eden by uh, ripping up the marriage contract. But now we see the connection of Shvidas Haluchis to Misash and Shul Sadikim. They're managed the same. Just like a Yid, there's an Ashoma and a Guf, there is the soul and the body. And that's, you know, by your sight, the, the Neshama, the day that the Neshama left the body. So um, the same thing here, the same thing here. Demis is, it's a, it's a Pella. How many Eden sinned in the eagle? How many Eden sinned in the eagle? And Ashi says, the whole Cheshman, he said, there were Edom, there were 3,000 people that were killed because there was Edom and Asra that they did, that were deserted, 3,000. And there's another few, it was, we're not talking about all the Eden. However, but the Eden were responsible because they, uh, there's a mitzvah, the Chech, the Chech, the Masech, obviously, it's all the Eden. A Jew is responsible for another Jew. Every Jew is responsible. Every Jew is responsible for his it's brother. You know who passed away uh, two weeks ago? Norman Norman uh, Rosenbaum. Do you remember Norman Rosenbaum? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, no. So I was reading about it. He came. He came. He was a young person who was middle. He wasn't that old. He was a young man. Oh, no. so the, the, the young, uncle, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uncle, yeah. yeah. right. <coughs> he came to the United oh, States. And must have, right. Also. They, they, uh, the, the, they didn't, <laughs> the, they didn't want to prosecute this guy, Lemrick Nelson, who Rachmanel Slang killed, stabbed his brother to death, and other thirty Schwarzes too. But at least one person was identified, and they refused to prosecute him. And when they did, they had a jury with. Uh, that there was later there was like an accusation that the prosecutor <laughs> there was an that after they acquitted him there was a party noch that the uh, yeah, that the, the, the jurors went together yeah, with the so, lawyer so it's a party to a party in a in a, in a court street uh, restaurant <laughs> but this lawyer. guy lawyer. this guy came on his own expense from Melbourne to the United States over 150 times and at the end he was matliach at the end he was matliach he got this guy in jail for 10 years. Civil yeah, it was a technicality. He, he violated his brother's yeah. civil rights. They, he went. They, they, he was tried three times. Three times. Finally, the third time, he was able to get this guy locked up for ten years. But that's not bad. At he least, was unrelenting. Unbelievable, right? Unrelenting. I, I, I really, I, I wanted to mention the shul that uh, you see a lesson of Avodas Hashem from Norman. Rosenbaum, he's Zichre Baruch. Really, his brother, right ahead of right, a lichtik and immediately he was a kodesh. They would chant and kill the Jew, and they went and they killed him uh, on the Nostrand Avenue. Where it wasn't so in Crown Heights in the '91, the riots when they were screaming, "Kill the Jews!" He's definitely an Aiden right His brother lived. Imagine he went from Melbourne to the United States over 150 times. And his own, he paid from his own pocket paid from his own pocket to make sure that this Shagit that killed his brother sees justice. Uh, it's not Stam. Uh, if Rahman al this guy, never sat for a day, uh, I mean, does this, you know what that means? Here in New York, that a Yayid was killed, surrounded by 30 people, chanting, kill a Jew. And everyone, and it's known, everyone knows who the lead killer was. And he's not sitting one day in jail. 
and everyone knew that the jurors who were selected that were subconscious. I mean, wouldn't that be a reason to, to say that they, uh, that you wouldn't, no one would allow a yid to be on the jury, right? There are no, there is no fellow sitting in the jury. Only have, only have the, I don't want to say what you have there. So they were judged by their own peers. But it's, it's theoretically, if there was a Carl Junger man there, if there was a Carl Junger man there, he'd be a holdout. He'd be the only one voting. Do you think they would let him be selected on the jury? No. Okay. They would find a way to get him on. So, so. There were a lot that. of things that were happening here. The judge was very, uh, was very against, uh, he was like very against the uh, Nelson's lawyer, who was totally against And the jury saw it, how, how the judge was so amazing. But he was a religious, he's not religious, he was any rapper. Uh -huh. A very, uh, what do you call it? And, um, Unfortunate, but uh, and then he had a very good lawyer. He had a counselor with his lawyer, uh, who was like a famous guy. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he, he said they should stay back at the hospital, they could have saved him. He had a lot of defenses. They didn't prove, uh, they didn't uh, because they didn't do an autopsy, they couldn't prove that it was that he did. You know, he had a he really came up with a whole bunch of defenses. That was that was the end. Norman did a tremendous thing. But the guy wants civil rights because it was it was a Jewish thing. It was, it was a civil rights. Thing. Yeah, you know what? Now the lesson that we learn from this is the responsibility to another. He he really took it upon himself for his brother, and he and and really he vindicated all of us because to sit here in New York in '91 when Ayid is killed with the chance of uh, kill a Jew, and the guy is walking out, mom is scot free, and it's a lotsonus, and the jurors are having a party yeah. afterwards. Uh, Norman came here and he didn't stop. He yeah, you know what I mean to fly from Australia. He lived in Melbourne. He had a, he had a family. A hundred, you know, every flight. I, I've, I've been to Schlich, You know what a flight? Yeah, it's it's like 22 week. hours, no? Ach, it's, yeah, it eats you up. It's a couple of hours less right now, but it's around that. It, unbelievable trip. Guy traveled 150 times till he got Lembrick Nelson locked up for 10 years. Unbelievable lesson of Eidus Hashem. I remember Uh, let me just finish off the Nekudu. Uh, it's talking about Lange Siche, but it, the Rebbe says that Elamai, the Yid are responsible. Every Yid is responsible for another Yid. Every single Yid is responsible for another Yid. Suppose like the Medrash, the Medrash says like this. So Lechayda, why, but Lepoil, who, who, who sinned? A few thousand Jews sinned. But yet, Chazal say, the Omosh should have been a saw that the Oasis went out he went and he broke it. So true, we say that there was a contract between David and the Eden. He wanted them. But how many Eden sinned? The real sin was that they didn't stand up for another Jew. So that's why you're breaking the luchas. The Rebbe says, here, and here's the punchline. <sighs> when you have uh, Chazal say, the, 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 we spoke about this recently, that you have the Neshama and the body of the Eden. Everyone has a Mila. The Alter Rebbe says in Tanya, that uh, when a person says and he says it before Shema, that's talking about the Jewish body. Because the true, David doesn't have to choose a Jewish neshama. It's like saying a, a rock and a diamond. I chose a diamond. You didn't choose a diamond. If you picked a rock, you'd be a dumbbell. The, why would you pick a rock instead of a diamond? That's not called you picked. That means you're a bardas. And you understand the value one over the other. To say that they eat that the Yiddish Neshama, the Ebesh depicted over a Goyish Neshama, that's not called Bechira. Bechira was the Jewish nose and the Jewish eyes and the Jewish ears and the Jewish body. The body of a Jew, the body of a Goy, seemingly the outside. They go to the medical doctor and ask him, the body of a Jew, the body of a Goy. You see a difference? You might not see right away the difference. The Neshama. So on the goof where Yid is similar to a Goy, that's where there's the Bechira. 
So you have the neshama and the goof of a yid. The same thing in the luchas. You have the neshama of the uh, and the and the. It's just like, so just like by the neshama. So uh, and and the luchas they have the similar thing. Neshama and the and the luchas the the luchas and the letters and the neshama and the body have the same interesting kind of, uh, interesting thing that's happening and uh, which is like this. The luchas are holy. They were created by Hashemoshes. It's a luchas is my selakimema. But once you add the michtav halakim onto it, once you add the Abish's letters, and then you take the kedusha out, it's kilu, it loses its whole value. Kilu, it loses its whole value. It's like someone that all of a sudden, for example, doesn't know what the Rebbe is saying, like someone who, is, who went, goes from riches to rags. Very difficult to go from rich to rags. Why? Because a person already ex- experienced a good life, now to go to rags is very hard. To go from rags to rich is nishka ferlach. If you hear, if you ever read a story of someone going from rags to riches, you feel good about the story. When you read a story of someone going to rich to rags, okay, you feel terrible. Why? Because it's very hurtful. When the luchas were my selakim, okay, my selakim, it's nice. But now that the michta velakim was added to it, and then it was taken away, Moshe Rabbeinu realized something. This so the whole luchas lost its whole value. Just like same thing as an asham and a, and a goof of a yid. Well, not entirely, because it's going to Chazal. Moshe Rabbeinu got the pieces. That's in the second luchas. Oh. The second luchas. He second got the luchas, yeah. yeah, from that uh, he got rich. But the first luchas, it was, is, 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 there was it. He Once he saw, even though the luchas itself had a value, it was spiritual, it was made by Nashmoshas, but once you add the michtav to it, and then it, the Abisha sucks it out, it all loses its whole value. Same thing a yid. Then a goof is very valuable. The neshama is very special. The Abisha puts it together, the neshama and the body, just like Chazal say the story in the Sanhedrin, and the story of the person, the person who was blind and the person who, had, who, uh, who, was, uh, who was limping, who couldn't walk. The neshama and the body, each one has something, but they, there isn't a part of the body that doesn't have a neshama conceptual thing like that Alan says that we separate the body uh, there isn't a little part of the finger that doesn't have a neshama the neshama and the body are together and and the job of the neshama is to bring kedusha into the body now that the neshama left it's similar so, that's why Chazal say that before Tchiyas HaMesim even Tzadikim that the, nesh, the body has to decompose Taka there's a, ba- a bone and a lose but the body has to decompose and then be reconstructed. L'chayda, that's similar to the luchas. Similar to the luchas. That uh, once the luchas experience that height, once the luchas experience that thing, that besides being uh, the luchas that the Ebesha made, that the Ebesha put in those oasis, once the Ebesha took it out, Moshe Rabbeinu breaks it. The same thing, the neshama of a yid, and once the, uh, the, once the neshama goes out of the goof, even though the goof is very special, it has to decompose before Mashiach comes to have Tchiyas HaMesim. So what's the lesson of Oydas Hashem? The, and what is the message when we walk with the Shivrei Luchas? Because the Yidna are conquering other countries. So the question is, why go conquer other countries? This is what we started talking about. Uh, about uh, Houston is mine. This is, this is mine. This is mine. Well, what, why do you have to go to Houston and conquer a new country? We're talking about Mohammed over here, not Mohammed's mitzvah necessarily, where Goyim are conquering. Jews were also out on the offensive. They conquered many kind of, like Israel today is, is nothing compared to what Israel was originally. Yidin were always going out, like Dovah the Melech went and conquered Syria, Mahulu. There you were going out. Why conquer? Why go conquer? You're not happy? Sit here. Because the is that once the Yidin experience this thing, of making a dida b'tachtoinim, taking a land and bringing kedusha into it, you can't go back. You can't go back. Once you even experience this tam toy, this good tam of taking the gashmis of this world and making it a, a, a place of kedusha, you can't go back. And that's the message that the Shivri Aluchas was standing. It was a message to the soldiers saying you can't go back. Once the, just like the Luchas, once they, even though they were holy, but once you added the michtav into it, and it was taken away, it lost its whole value. The same thing here in Kedusha. Ayid can never go back. Ayid has to go forward. And that was the message to the soldiers that were going, that even though but still, we have to go, we have to move on in Kedusha to conquer more lands in Kedusha.
לחיים, לחיים. לחיים, לחיים. 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 that the Lochot is called Mikhtar Elohim. I don't think anywhere in the Tanakh it's a Mikhtar. Okay, but the Torah doesn't have to say something twice. It tells us once we know it. No, but Lochot is saying a lot of right. times. Right. Different, different Nevi'im. Right, different... but here the Torah describes. The Torah wants to tell you what, what's... Mikhtar Elohim is the only time. All the time it's a Lochot, Lochot, Lochot. Yeshaya and Yirmiya and every place. Then it's a Mikhtar. It's the only place it's a mikhtar. That's my question. Why? So l'chaim, l'chaim. We have to be like this shivre uh, luchas. When we when we see that where life is going, moving on. And uh, so sometimes in Masliach Bar Hashem, we, had, we were successful in a certain period in our life. So, okay, now we go to sleep. The Rebbe is one of the big campaigns that the Rebbe, he spoke about every year in the honor of his father's yard site was um, this concept that I've had that uh, that they should make for people that retire, they should make koilul. Koilul. Because the Rebbe said that uh, that uh, that the person, uh, how could the person, a person has to go up in Kedusha. How could it be that people were very productive in their life? People were doctors, they were lawyers, they were uh, business people, uh, people were Rosh teachers, Malamdim, and then all of a sudden they retire, and it, uh, and, and Avid has to grow. The Rebbe is big. Every year the Rebbe spoke about this, that they should make a koilul. It didn't take off so strongly, but there are, there are a few places in the world that they have this concept of a koilul, retiree koilul. A retiree koilul. A retiree koilul. All right. Uh, exactly. A retiree koilul, the Eden that retired, that uh, they should learn Torah. But the MS is that every stage in life, Every stage in life, that's the Indian in life that we're never mistopic. We're never it's like the luchas. You're happy, you're kedusha. But once you taste this thing that the, that the Abish adds, the adds the the to the uh, to the luchas. He adds the oisius. You can't take it out. We always have to grow in kedusha. So lachaim lachaim that in our own Hashem that we should always be mindless b'kodesh ve'ain merida.